All right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Basically, welcome everyone to the October PowerShell community call. Um, let's call this the Pirate Halloween edition, or <laughs> in other words, please excuse my injury. Anyways, welcome again to the October community call where we talk about all things PowerShell, what the team's up to, and how much we appreciate the community for all the help that they've been giving us. Now, um, it's kind of strange to see me, our fearless leader, uh, uh, Steve Lee, is performing his civic duty today and is on jury duty. So bear with me, we'll get through this all together. Now, um, today's uh, agenda is, Sydney has it up on the screen for you, but also uh, let me put this into the chat. Um, I've got the link to the agenda, which is in the issue on GitHub. And the reason is, is that you can take a look at the agenda there as well. Also, please feel free to add questions that you may have as we get through or have this conversation. And towards the end, we'll make sure that we go through and cover all the questions. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started with the very first thing on the agenda item, PowerShell 7.2. RC1 and our release. First of all, yes, we are getting very close now to releasing 7.2. This is our long-term service or LTS release, so it's going to be good for three years. Our focus is on stability and quality for this long-term service release. And again, I'll say this half a dozen times at least, I want to thank the community, especially the community for giving your feedback showing us where we could do some improvements and your great ideas on features that have been added into this particular uh, release of PowerShell. Now, we are, I mean, right on the verge. I think today is the day that we're going to release RC1 of PowerShell 7.2. So watch Twitter and watch our release space. We should be getting that puppy out today. This is a go live release, meaning that it's supported in production. So you can feel free to start using it as soon as it releases. Now we do expect to uh, have the official LTS release during the month of November. That's still on target. I don't have an exact date for you, um, but we are targeting November. Also November is kind of a special month. We love to do releases around November, give everybody something to have as a present for the holidays and to work with. But also one thing I'd point out is that this November is uniquely special in that on November 14th, PowerShell has its 15th birthday. Those of you in this community call, can you believe it's been 15 years? So uh, at our next community call, yeah, we're going to do a little bit of a celebration of 15 years. We're certainly going to talk about the 15 years that, that PowerShell's been out, and we welcome everyone to that next community call. I've got more information around that, too, as we kind of get through this. So on PowerShell 7.2, lots of improvements, features, and fixes from GitHub. Again, thank you so much. Lots of development features, though, outside of PowerShell. And this is kind of interesting. I love, uh, Jeffrey Snover has a great phrase for this. He refers to it as the swim lanes of innovation. One of the beautiful things about PowerShell is, is that PowerShell itself, yes, we're getting ready to release that, but a lot of the development occurs in the modules, the extensibility of PowerShell outside of PowerShell. And the benefit to you is the more development that we do in these modules, well, we can release it sooner. As soon as it's ready, it meets the quality bar. We can get that out, and you've seen that with modules like, um, well, Sydney's been talking a lot about secret management and modules like PS Read Lines. So the swim lanes of innovation, not only is 7.2 releasing, is releasing, but follow our news because we're releasing a lot of those modules as well. Now, a couple of additional things around the 7.2 release. Obviously, we have a giant conference coming up Ignite. We will be at Ignite, and we hope that you are too. Are you guys planning to come to Ignite? Really looking forward to it. Just to let you know, there is a PowerShell session that you might want to check out. i uh, give you the number for it. I don't have the link yet. It's BRK260, and that is the infamous PowerShell Unplugged with Jeffrey Snover. Besides that session, there is also going to be a 30-minute Q&A session on November 3rd, and I don't have a link for you yet. As a matter of fact, we're meeting today to try to nail down the specifics. Um, it'll be on November 3rd around 3.30 PST time. This will be a live Q&A with 
Jeffrey Snover, uh, a few of the engineers and some of our MVPs from the community. So it'll be a great time to join, ask questions and talk about PowerShell. And I'm sure somebody will be mentioning things like the fact that PowerShell's got a 15 year birthday party going on right now. Um, with that on 7-2, let me just kind of open the floor to Danny and Sydney and, and Steven. Did you guys have anything else that you wanted to kind of highlight on the 7-2 release? Nothing else from me. I think you you covered it quite well. <laughs> Same, well thank you. Event. you. You hit the nail on the head. Well, that's great. Thanks, Daddy. Um, if you guys think of something, just go ahead and jump on in. Now, a couple of more notes on 7.2. Just remember that 7.2 will run side by side with Windows PowerShell 5.1. So please download and install it and try it out. And also keep in mind, we have new support for getting PowerShell. You may have heard us talk about this before. It's now available on the store. And I mentioned this now, and we're going to move to an update on this. But if you haven't heard, and, and Travis, you might need to correct me on this, but I think starting in PowerShell 7.2 Preview 7, maybe, is when we added the fact that you can get PowerShell updated through Microsoft Updates. And I, I didn't check to see if Travis was online, but Travis, do you uh, maybe want to give us some more information about Microsoft Updates and the latest and greatest? Oh, Sydney, is he not online? Hmm, I can't see. Give him another second. Oh, I'm looking to. Well, and if Travis is not online yet, we can give you some more information about the updates. As a matter of fact, let me drop in a link right now. And if he does come in, we'll have him give an update on the Microsoft updates. But if you take a look at this link that I'm dropping into the chat, this, oh, I'm not sure what that was. Oh, this is the frequently asked questions about the Microsoft update process. Now, a couple of things here is the Microsoft update will, and I'm just going by the seat of my pants here. The Microsoft update will add a registry key setting that means that it can be updated. Now, the interesting thing is, is that if you prefer to update through WSUS or through something like SCCC, uh, I got carried away with all of my Cs, SCCM, there we go. You certainly can. You also can opt in to have Microsoft Update go ahead and do the updates for you. And so take a look at that fact. It explains everything to you about the Microsoft Update. And of course, we'll be happy to answer additional questions. And if Travis comes in, I'll let him give you some more information on that. Well, to kind of keep things moving along, did I mention that PowerShell has a 15 year birthday party coming up. Yeah, I think I did, but yeah, I'll just make sure. Um, to keep things moving, next on our agenda item is, um, I think we talked about this in the last community call uh, about PowerShell Gallery and some work that we're doing on the ARM migration. Amber, do you want to talk to us about that? Hi, yes, I can. Um, so um, as Jason just mentioned, uh, during the last community call, uh, we briefly talked about the work that um, we need to do um, in order to migrate our previously RDFE-based cloud services to an ARM-based cloud service. Um, and we were planning on doing um, the migration in production at the end of last month, but we hit some pretty major uh, road bumps along the way. Um, and this was mostly due to the fact that our cloud services are deployed in different regions um, and they require talking to each other. Um, well, like things like the databases and the storage accounts that require talking to each other across regions. Uh, so this ended up um, being a much bigger issue than we thought it would be. Um, fortunately, we've ironed out all of the issues in our test environment and we're going to resume um, the migration work in production next week. Um, so this shouldn't impact the gallery uh, usage at all. Um, it'll still be live and available, um, but we just wanted to let everyone know that this is going on. Um, we are going to update one production cloud service at a time. So if for some reason something um, fails or go goes horrifically, we will just um, <laughs> reroute traffic to our backup cloud service. Um, so after all the testing and changes that we've made in our test environment, 
we're pretty, pretty confident that um, everything's going to go smoothly and it shouldn't um, impact any pipelines or services that are dependent on the gallery. Um, but again, we just wanted to give everyone a heads up and this will be happening on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Um, so you can reach out either uh, via Twitter um, to either me or Steve or anyone on the team via Twitter. Um, or a better place to go is GitHub. Just open up an issue if um, you are confused about anything or feel like something bad has happened. Um, feel free to open up an issue there. Again, we will be updating uh, the status page as well um, and we'll let everyone know when everything is complete. Oh, thank you, Amber. That's awesome. So make sure I have this right. Tuesday and Wednesday of next week is when we're going to go through and we don't expect anybody to notice, but just to keep it on everybody's calendar, right? Exactly. Yep. That's awesome. And feel free. Um, I've had some people ask if um, you can still like publish modules to the gallery um, within this time frame, and you definitely can just operate as normal and things should be okay. I love the confidence. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> well, now we're going to turn to Sydney and, and and believe me, it's it's great to have Sydney doing this because like I had mentioned at the beginning of the call, this could have just been a really short talk of me going, hey, go get PowerShell. But Sydney's going to talk about an update on PowerShell Get. Take it away, Sydney. Yeah, so um, I guess the first thing I would say is that we had our last preview release for PowerShell Get 3.0 back in August, I believe, and I want to give a big thank you to all the feedback we got from that release. Um, tons of issues opened by a wide range of folks um, with lots of different scenarios, and so that's been super helpful to our development. Um, we are planning to have another preview release um, in mid-November, so in coming up in a few weeks here. This will be our preview 12 release. We have it scoped out into a project on GitHub if you're curious about the specifics, but really what we've prioritized with this release is the remaining sort of like high scenario bug fixes, um, as well as uh, a lot of the remaining commandlet implementation. So while this um, release will still leave a couple of edge cases around um, commandlet implementation uh, open, we are getting very close to being complete on that end. And so um, look forward to this release in a few weeks and um, continue to give us lots of feedback as we sort of narrow in on this 3.0 release. I know it's been a long journey, but we really appreciate all the feedback and support along the way. Um, I guess I'll open it up to, to any of um, the other folks working on this release. If you there's anything I might've missed or you'd like to add. No, I think that sounds uh, perfect, Sydney. Thank you. Um, and just once again, thanks to everyone in the community for uh, testing out the last pre-release and just giving us so much feedback. That's been really helpful and it really helps to know what y'all are looking for and which, which uh, cases we can account for as you move forward. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Well, great. Well, I have two updates uh, to give everyone. Let me start with the first one, and this is around DSC, both versions two and version three. And I, I know that a lot of folks have a lot of questions like, uh, what are you shipping and when are you gonna ship it? Well, let's talk about when are we gonna ship it? We're working with DSC V3 with a partner, uh, a guest config. And so when are we gonna ship it? I don't have a date for we're letting our partner uh, take the lead on this for when they're going to ship it. But here's what I'm thinking in my head. I'm thinking that it's going to be early spring, maybe the build time frame somewhere in there. Um, don't hold me to it, but that's what I'm kind of thinking. Um, so that's what we're, we're kind of looking at uh, for a release. You are more than welcome to work with our current betas. Now, as far as the question on what are we doing, and I... I foolishly do, do not have the link for this, but if you go out to our blog page and take a look at our roadmap, we discuss some of the things that we're doing with DSC V3 moving forward. And what I wanna do is give you some additional information and some places where you can find some additional information. Andrew and I uh, went to the DSC community call recently, a couple of weeks ago, and talked a little bit about DSC V3. And Andrew gave some troubleshooting tips and things like that, which I'm gonna take a quick demo and give you my number one troubleshooting tip right now if you're working with DSC. But 
let me point something out. If you are working with DSC, and this is something that you spend time with, I strongly encourage you to hang out with the DSC community and join their DSC community calls for the latest and greatest information on all things DSC. Let me give you a link to where they have their community calls, their webpage, and they have uh, the community calls. The reason I'm giving you this link is they don't have the video up yet, but I, uh, I'm, I'm going with the idea that they'll have it up soon that um, you'll be able to see the video with uh, Andrew and I, and Andrew talking about some of the things in DSC uh, V3. Um, some of you have already kind of heard some of the things that we're, uh, that we're looking at with DSC v V3, and I'll do a quick demo here in a second. A couple things to let you know. We are going to open source the DSC repo. Everybody go ahead and say thank you. Uh, don't say thank you to me, just <laughs> thank you to everybody. You know, a little round of applause. We're gonna open source that repo when we do the release. Along with that, and I know some people have been very interested in this, Sean and I have been working on a list with Michael Green and a few others on updating the DSC documentation, and we'll be adding some new transitioning documentation if you're looking to transition from V2 to V3. Now, let me give you kind of the nuts and bolts of this, basically bottom line it for you. If you're using DSC V2 and you like your experience, continue using DSC V2. We're not changing that. We've made that module for DSC V2, which I'm gonna show you in just a second, available on the gallery. Because if you've noticed our, our previous messages, we're not gonna ship the module PS Desired State Configuration with PowerShell anymore. We're going, this is part of our alignment to, you may have heard us talk about minimal PowerShell, and this is those swim, li uh, swim lanes of, uh, uh, of innovation. Uh, we'll be developing and working on it outside of PowerShell. That way we'll be able to more rapidly get you updates and features. But DSC V2, we are not gonna update. It's gonna stay as it is, unless of course something security wise crops up. So the features that you're enjoying today, you can still continue to enjoy. Now DSC V3 is gonna be a little bit different. One of the most primary aspects today on using DSC V3 is that the resources that you use need to be class-based. Now around that, I just wanna briefly show you a quick demo of a couple of things that you might run into if you're experimenting with DSC V3 in its current beta. And I just wanna show you a couple of things that might help you well, not bang on the, the keyboard and scream at the monitor as much. Um, Andrew helped me with this. This was great. Let me take you over to my desktop. Oh, and I lose, did I lose my mouse pointer? No, I still got it. And let me just uh, kind of give you a, a tour here. Well, you can see from my predictive IntelliSense that I've done this a lot. So get module PS desired state list available. Um, and let me show you what modules that I have. And this is what you're gonna find on the gallery. You're gonna find V2, which is, whoa, my screen just flipped. Let me see if I can get it to flip back. Thank you, screen. You're gonna see 205 up there. And that's what that's the DSC that you've come to expect and love and all of that kind of good stuff. This is gonna build your configurations. This is gonna use the resources that you're using today. It hasn't changed. You'll also notice available on the gallery 3.0.0 beta one. This is DSC V3. This one, you must be using class-based resources with. Now, we've gotten a lot of uh, folks going, hey, I'm getting kind of confused on, on how to get these to work. One of the first and most important things is make sure to import the module for the version that you want to work under. So before you try to run a configuration or before you start playing with a resource in particular, make sure you have the right desired state configuration. Most common mistake is, they all, uh, the, the person may already have version two loaded and they're getting all kinds of errors on their screens for what they think they're working with V3 or vice versa. So as an example, if you're working with uh, V2 and you have V3 loaded, you're gonna get a lot of error messages because those aren't class-based resources. So make sure that you import the module that you would like to have. Oh, Crescendo, yeah, we're gonna talk about that too. But you import the module that you'd like to have. So make sure you import the version that you want, PS design, oh, there we go, version. And if you want, as you can see on my screen, if you want version two, go for that. If you wanna work with version three, go with that. The Also, the most common mistake is, if you're working with V3, 
remember your resources must be class-based. If they're not class-based, you're gonna get errors uh, on your screen. So class-based resources. Now, just to let you know, we are working on documentation on how to convert your existing resources to class-based. And we will also be providing a, and, and let me overemphasize this part, a very simple conversion tool. So a conversion tool that will convert some of your resources to class-based, simple resources. Now, some of you I know, because I've done this myself, have written very complicated resources uh, as composites, and you have very complicated stuff that you may have to do manually, but we'll provide you documentation on that. So that's what I wanted to give you as kind of an update on DSC V3 that we are working on it, we are moving forward on it, and we're looking forward uh, to getting more of your feedback. And please, 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 please join the community call for DSC if DSC is one of your things. A lot of great information there. And now next, after I take a breath, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Crescendo. If you haven't heard, Crescendo is a, a tool that we've been working on to help you wrap platform specific or those uh, console commands and turn those console commands into something that's a little bit easier to work with, more PowerShell, more like a commandlet. In other words, those native commands, they're producing string output. Well, why not have them produce objects instead? And why not name them with a verb and a noun? And why not give them consistent and clearly spelled out parameters, all that kind of good stuff? Well, Crescendo is designed for folks that may not have the skills to just go wrap a native command all by themselves or use auto rest, uh, a rest API for, for wrapping a command. If you don't have those skills, Crescendo is for us, is for us to be able to wrap up. Now, just as a kind of an update, we are just days away. Any day now, we'll be releasing, probably early next week, we'll be releasing Crescendo Preview 4. This is our last planned preview before we do a release candidate and then our um, uh, general availability uh, for Crescendo. So we appreciate any feedback that you can give us now towards the end as we start getting everything buttoned up and ready for the release. One of the new things, and I'm, I'm hoping Jim's on the call because I want to bring him on to see if he can talk a little bit about this, but one of the new things that we've added into Crescendo, besides some bug fixes and some other interesting features to help your wrapping, we've added in something called help parsers. And help parsers are a pretty interesting way for people to be able to deal with, well, I don't know, have you looked at some of the modern command lines recently? They are pretty complex and intense. And if you wanted to wrap those, you might be sitting there, even Crescendo or with a, a REST API, you could be ending up wrapping hundreds of commandlets out of one command. Well, that could be challenging in maintenance. So Jim's created something that we have as an experimental feature, these help parsers. And at this point, I'll let Jim talk about them. Hey, Jim. Good morning and good afternoon, everybody, or good day. Um, I have been I had been looking at a number of kind of the more complicated uh, command line tools, things for Kubernetes, Docker. Uh, there's a, a tool called OpenFS, uh, OpenFast, and NatSH, and uh, even Winget. And I had been looking at these things as as trying to how would we wrap these things if we wanted to wrap them. It's probably not realistic to ask Docker to release a set of commandlets. It's really not their thing. So I started looking at uh, how can I automatically generate these commands that would be associated with with uh, Docker, for example by looking at the help. And it turned out that the help was regular enough that I could accelerate the wrapping, uh, wrapping all the, the possible commands that you can do with Docker. It doesn't, it's not finished. It doesn't finish them, it, but, it, but it, it creates the configurations for, uh, for all of the subcommands and many of the uh, parameters that are listed and things like that. And I've included uh, five or six, I think, um, of these, uh, what I would call scripts in uh, progress, they're not they're not finished by any stretch of the imagination, but they do a pretty good job of calling the command, getting the help, figuring out what a command could be called, and finding most of the 
the parameters that you would that 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 command would uh, would uh, you you need for that command. And so I've wrapped those up uh, in a set of in a set of scripts uh, that will be part of the next preview release. So you can kind of play around with them and and maybe this will spark somebody else to say, oh no, there's a better way to do this or don't bother with this because it, it's uh, it, it's ridiculous or what have you. But this is just something that I wanted to take a look at and how can I accelerate this process if this is if if I want to follow this track. So I have these these uh, these examples, what I would call a, a mostly working example code. They actually all work if you have the tool that will produce a, a crescendo configuration and in some cases uh, produce a rather sizable one. For example, Kubernetes already can it, it can build the configurations for 103 different uh, permutations of running the kube control uh, 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 command. So it's just something that we're kind of exploring. This is not something that we're uh, that we're. Uh, I'm not even sure it's you know at the end of the day is going to really work, but it's just something that I was exploring to see if it could work. So I encourage you to take a look in the next preview. Um, it'll be part of the module and uh, provide some feedback uh, on the upcoming uh, on the upcoming uh, uh, crescendo release. We've fixed a whole bunch of bugs as well. We've got some new functionality. We're handling a bunch of of new cases. Uh, uh, there was, uh, and that's all documented in in our README coming up. And we'll be having a, another blog post uh, created. And uh, and uh, Sean has just written a series of blogs, or is in the process of writing a series of blogs on using Crescendo. They're pretty cool. And uh, we really look forward to your feedback. Hey Jim, wasn't um, if memory is serving me correct, um, you had written a the, a help parser for Cube CTL um, and showed that off in a team meeting over a year ago, and that's what inspired Crescendo, isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. That's that's exactly what I uh, what what inspired me to kind of pursue the possibilities here to see whether or not you could do enough. Uh, uh, from an automated perspective to to make that happen. So yeah, that it was kind of an uh, it was the spark. And as Jim mentioned, uh, when we do release this, there'll be a blog post out that will talk about all of the things that have been added in this preview. And one of the things that Jim had mentioned that I really want to point out to you is Sean Wheeler uh, wrote a great little series. On, on using Crescendo. And this is on the community blog. You can actually read this right now, but there will be links uh, in the blog post to his great series as well. So you can learn more about Crescendo and how he thought about putting Crescendo items um, together. But check out those help parsers. There's, there's a lot of interesting ideas around that, like around maintaining. You know, Once you've built a Crescendo module, how do you maintain it over time? as those, especially those modern native commands, get updated with new parameters and new features, could this be useful to making that maintenance easier and faster? So some interesting things um, to take a look at. Thanks, Jim, really appreciate that. And moving right along, <coughs> excuse me, maybe I should have some water. Um, moving right along, um, I don't know about you guys, but every single day I am using VS Code and really enjoying the experience. Um, and I know that those folks have been doing a lot of work on VS Code. So my friend Rob, it's great to see you, Rob. You want to give everybody an update on all things in the world and VS Code? Hi, yeah, for sure. Um, I see Andy's joined the call as well. Oh, Andy. Hey, Andy. Um, and Andy, I know, has been working very hard on um, uh, a lot of like key infrastructure and robustness in VS Code uh, and the PowerShell VS Code extension for a little while now. Uh, and they've also managed to streamline a lot of our um, release uh, like infrastructure um, so that we are able to release, um, you know, on a much faster cadence now. Um, but in parallel with that, um, the, we, we've been sort of trying to assuage the infamous um, pipeline thread issues um, that have lied, you know, that for, for a little while now have lied, lied at the heart of the PowerShell extension for VS Code. Um, you might be familiar with um, 
issue number 1295 in the editor services repo, which um, is sort of storied, but also, you know, pretty, uh, pretty interesting, really, if you're ever interested in how to implement a PowerShell host. Um, so we've been putting together a lot of sort of work and code on that for a while now. And, um, you know, we, we were looking pretty strong a while ago and then um, hit a hurdle with some architectural issues, um, trying to make the debugger work, things like that, because um, it's quite an interesting task implementing a debugger. Um, so we're, we're just about ready for our first preview release of, of, of that particular, of that work. Um, you can see that the PR itself has been open for a little while. Um, just as a work in progress um, to sort of be like um, transparent about the work and, and like what's going on and, and uh, where it's at. Um, and um, we are at, at finally at the stage where we are making the, we, we're just making the tests work basically. It's, it's all done otherwise. Um, and I, um, we're, we're predicting a, a preview release of this, complete overhaul to the PowerShell extensions sort of runtime core uh, in the next couple of weeks. And um, it'd be really great if you could try it out because um, despite, um, you know, we have like a bunch of fantastic integration tests and things, but there are a lot of scenarios that are very difficult to cater for um, in testing infrastructure or even just like manually ourselves. We know that a lot of folks out there are using um, PowerShell in all kinds of fantastic ways um, that we w couldn't even expect. Um, and, you know, I'm personally very hopeful that um, this is going to be a really like huge step in the right direction. Um, and, you know, I think it's going to bring a lot more performance, stability and um, uh, simplicity to the the PowerShell extension for VS Code, but um, we want to work with you to make sure that um, uh, you know we've got all the bases covered. There's a reason we want to release it as a preview. Um, you know there are going to be all kinds of um, scenarios. You know things like remote debugging, like that's sort of like an intersection of like a couple of of scenarios and um, setting up a remote uh, connection in CI is, you know, the kind of thing that's just kind of crazy to do. Um, so, um, yeah, we're, we're really excited about this because it's like pretty much a re-implementation of, of the core engine that drives the PowerShell extension and the way the terminal works and the way completions work and all of that stuff. Um, and, um, you know, we we think that it's, it's going to you know, fix a lot of the fundamental issues that people have experienced with the extension. Um, and so look out for that preview release. Um, you know, we're trying to make, we'll do our best to make it as sort of um, smooth as possible. Um, but um, let us know all of your feedback if anything goes wrong, um, stuff like that, so that, you know, we can um, get it stable as soon as we can so that we can have the best possible experience in the extension. Please try out this new preview of the extension. Thanks, Rob, Andy. This is awesome work. Thank you very much. Well, I'm. it's really hard for me to read what my notes say. Uh, I'm, it says here something like the hammer has an update. What does that? Oh, that's my buddy, Sean, a documentation update. Um, Sean, are you online? Do you want to talk about docs? Do you want to show some new things that you're doing on docs? Yeah, certainly. Let me share my screen. You sound terrible, by the way. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> so I just dropped a bunch of links in the chat. Um, the first one's to the first blog post in my Crescendo series. And uh, you'll find at the bottom of that links to uh, the whole series. So uh, I've finished at this point. Um, I don't have any more uh, planned in this series, but... Um, We'll see what comes with uh, preview four, see if I've got more to write about. Um, uh, the next link is about what's new in docs. 
um, every month. Uh, I update what we've been doing the previous month and September was very busy. You can see there was a total overhaul of the uh, installation documentation um, and um, I want to point out we've uh, we previewed this a couple of months ago on the uh, community call, but it, this is out now. Uh, so we have this matrix that shows uh, all the versions that we support uh, of all the distributions, and uh, we've got this same information uh, available for all the OSs, not just Linux. Uh, it's at the bottom of the page. Here uh, as well, so um, lots of new good information. Um, we do mention the support for when uh, Microsoft update um, here in the Windows setup documentation. Um, and yeah, so it's talked about here. This is how you enable it. And um, the support, the um, FAQ for that is here as well. So this is all live, ready to go. Um, and then out here in utility modules, I wanted to point out that uh, we've updated the documentation for uh, script analyzer. We now have not just the commandlets, but all of the rules documented out here on docs. Um, and we'll be keeping this up to date with each release going forward. So that's what I got. Awesome, Sean. And hey, folks, um, Sean's been trying to come up with better ways on those installation docs to get all of that information into a clear and concise way. And so that you can focus on the version of, of the platform that you're on and how to get PowerShell on it. Um, so he's made a lot of changes. We appreciate any feedback that you have on how we can improve that. We're trying to make it better for everybody, whether you're brand new to PowerShell or you're an experienced hand and you just need to know some of the latest specs on a particular platform of getting it installed up and running. So with all of the work that he's put into it, we would really appreciate your feedback on how we can improve it from here to make it easier for everybody. So thanks, Sean. That was that was awesome. And hey, thanks for the series on Crescendo. That series is awesome. I appreciate it. OK, um, that takes us to our last agenda item. And I'm going to need some help from uh, the uh, PMs and, and the rest of the team to help me go through these questions. It's tough for me to read them, but if we start going through the questions and answering everybody's questions, just as a reminder, please feel free to add questions to the issue or you can drop them into the chat here and we'll start going through and taking a look at what questions um, that we have. So first off, can I just open the floor and can somebody tell me, do we have a question? <laughs> yeah, I think that there's a few questions in the chat that we can start with. Um, I'm going to also Sydney. name that I, as people saw in the chat, have poor, planned very poorly and my laptop battery is in the danger zone. So if I drop off, I'll try and call back on my phone. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, uh, first couple of questions are around um, DSC v3, it sounds like. Um, and the question is, um, binary module class is OK or PS script classes only? And will DSC v3 be supported on um, PowerShell 5.1? OK, let me an answer the second one first. And I don't know if Andrew's online to answer the first one. Uh, let me answer the second one first, which is, is, the, um, is this going to work on Windows PowerShell 5.1? One. Let me say this. Currently, we're in development and our focus is on our partner of Gus Config and PowerShell 7. So what I'm saying basically is we're not intentionally not going to make it work or not work on Windows PowerShell 5.1, but we also aren't really planning necessarily to make it work on PowerShell 5.1. So I've noticed some folks working with us that have said, you know, today it seems to be working. Yeah. And, and, and I would say that 
Mm, probably not going forward, but I don't know for sure yet. So we'll have to see as we get closer to release and what future development that we do. Because we are working on PowerShell 7 and we need to work cross-platform with Linux, we do have to make substantial changes to DSC um, for that to work better. That's, that's basically why we've made a lot of the changes that we have thus far. So as you know, is that still gonna work on Windows PowerShell 5.1? I really can't, you know, tell you that it will uh, going forward, but we'll see as we go through them. Um, first, and also, um, your first question, and I, 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 let me give you this answer. Yes, I know that it needs to be script-based uh, classes. Do binary ones work? That I would have to um, ask Andrew. If he's online, he can answer, but if not, I can get you an answer for that and uh, post something out as an answer for that. I don't know if Andrew's on. I'm taking a look. I don't see him, I don't think. OK, well, we'll get you an answer on that on the binary modules. Cool. Um, next question I see um, is any updates about what the about from the language working group? Um, what's happening? Are there plans to include community members in the work anytime soon? Um, perhaps when 7.2 is out the door. And I think I saw another question generally about our, our sort of roadmap with the working groups and planning to add more members, that sort of thing. Yeah, I actually have some information on this. Not a whole lot, but I do have some. First of all, the working groups, the members of the working groups right now have been doing, at, at least in my view, uh, a phenomenal job. It's not easy jumping into um, um, the team's workspace and, you know, getting ready to go and just being, uh, um, you know, all set and, and, and achieving results. It's tough to kind of catch up. These folks have just, they just dove in, got to work right away and have been achieving major results and has been a great help to us. So the question is with um, the success, and we'll get you more information on um, uh, stats on those working groups going forward, but the question that I've been getting a lot is, well, if this has been going well, do you intend to maybe add some more people to the working groups? And the answer is, yeah, we're starting those conversations right now. And there we do want to add some more people to working groups. So I would say keep an eye. Uh, we'll definitely uh, mention it in community calls. You'll definitely see information uh, come out from us. Steve will tweet it, that kind of thing as we start to look forward to adding more members to the working groups. Now, the specific question on the language working group, moving forward, we're gonna look at all working groups and seeing what members that you know we, we should be adding into those working groups. So while I'd say I don't have a definitive answer for you, it's most likely that sure, moving forward, we're gonna be adding people to a variety of those working groups. So thanks for the questions on working groups and thank you so much for your interest in working groups. We are going to need to. We are going to ask for some more help. It's it's working out really well for us, and it's helping us to get uh, better at achieving our internal goals with with all of you on working through those issues and working through those PRs. Which I know it's easy for us to, you know, you hear somebody like me or somebody, you know, say this, and it sounds very flippant when we say it, right? Um, we ex we value the community help. No, we actually do. It's it's the, this community has helped build PowerShell the success that it is today, and that's an ongoing process. So working groups is just one extension of that that we look forward to adding more people into and getting that great help so we can all work together on making PowerShell just a better product for everyone involved. So thank you. Nice. And speaking of new help, um, got a question down here. When do we get the illustrious new PowerShell PM on here? Um, I think this is referencing <laughs> Steven, <laughs> who we're very excited to have joined our team. Um, he has, um, right now, it just so happens that on Thursdays he has um, a, what they call boot camp, but uh, sort of a, a ramping up onboarding program. Um, so that's why he's not here today, but I expect him to be in the November community call. And if you haven't already, um, I'm sure you've seen him in the repos, um, triaging issues and responding to, to things. So we're so excited to have Steven on the team. Yeah, let me just say that, yeah, Steven joined us. Oh man, what was it about a couple of months ago? And Steven's doing just a great job. We really like having him. He's been working with uh, Danny and Sydney and I. It's been really great to have him on board. And I really look forward to all of you getting a chance to meet him. 
and and to work with him on on new projects. I know that he's leaning in very heavily on VS Code and predictors and a whole lot of things. So uh, we we really look forward to uh, uh, working with Stephen and and hope that you do too. Cool. Um, so then the next question was, if Windows Server um, 2022 is still not deployed with 5.1, should that not be considered for compatibility? So I think this is referencing the DSC v3 compatibility um, discussion that we were just having. Yeah, so I would just say that, um, um, as, as I said, um, we, we don't have any firm, uh, uh, you know, yes, it will or no, it won't at this time. Um, I would say let's continue the conversation as we move forward and let's take a look at scenarios and things like that. I would say this, V2, which you've been using for years now, um, will always work on Windows PowerShell 5.1. So, you know, consider this, there's nothing wrong with using V2 if that matches your scenario. V3 is us moving going forward into a new into new areas in support not only of our internal partners but of the configuration space as we see it going forward and so that's going to take us some time to move through that so v3 um like i said uh we don't have an indication at this time whether it will or won't be but i would hesitate to say that it would because of the new work that we have to do and let's continue that conversation uh, with the entire community, and we'll talk about it and take a look at scenarios as we move through it. Awesome. I am not seeing any other questions here or in the GitHub issue, but I could be very well missing something. I just saw another one. Um, um, if so the Oh, question I is, just saw the one. Yeah, go ahead, Sydney. Oh, okay. uh, it says if PowerShell 7 can't get installed by default on server 2022 or Windows 11, when will it be installed by default? What a great question. And I, I, another, another. this is another one of those things that it sounds very flippant coming from me or, or you hear us say all the time, we're working on getting PowerShell in box. Um, and let me just say, we really are working on that. Um, and we're working really hard and we have a path that we believe is gonna work moving forward. And uh, Steve has mentioned this and we will get more information out to the community, but we're looking at a way um, to have uh, basically a magic bootloader in PowerShell that, that in Windows that will make PowerShell 7 appear for you. It's not technically in box, but we're doing our very best to make it so that it's seamless and it feels like that it's in box. We don't have a lot of information today on when that's going to happen. I'm working with the with the Windows team to figure out how best we can do uh, uh, squeeze this in. And Steve is obviously working on the designs for this, which we haven't finished, but we will publish publicly so that everybody can have a look at what we're doing. This is active and very important work to us. So please understand that it sounds flippant when we say we're working on it because you've been hearing that for years, but we really are. And I... I, I strongly believe that we have a direction forward. So we will get more information about timelines and how we intend to do this um, over the, 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 the upcoming months after we've gotten 7-2 out and everybody's had their holidays. When we come back next year, we'll be talking more about that. And I just saw uh, a great question pop in that says, is there a good example GitHub for module developers? I'm currently using .NET new PSM module, but I'd love to see what others are doing. Um, let me just say this, um, we are, I don't wanna make this announcement yet, uh, but we are working on a project where Sean and I and the rest of the PMs and many other team members, we're gonna start working on some, some what we hope to be really good documentation on modules and publishing modules to the gallery, how we build our modules, maybe some uh, uh, what kind of language uh, specifications that we follow here when we're building stuff. We intend to try to get some more of that documentation out, but if somebody could uh, help me with it, maybe Sean uh, giving us uh, some links to some of the existing documentation. And folks, I would just say that as a community, if you wanna share some links to your own documentation on building modules, please do so. Yeah, that's great. There's so many good community examples. Um, looks like Justin yeah, posted Justin, I would um, agree. something. Yeah, <laughs> sure. There's a lot of <laughs> great examples to look out for. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions. I don't know if you are, Jason. Nope. 
I'm not seeing any other questions as well. Um, well, this is great. Well, let's go ahead and wrap this session up and give everybody about seven minutes back. Oh, it looks like speaking. we have a hand raised. Uh, oh, do we want to? Oh, we take have that? a hand raised. Yeah, yeah sure. Hi. Go. This is Ian. I had a question for uh, Andy and Rob about the PowerShell extension on VSC. So while doing support calls um, on on PowerShell ISC, one could use the show command add-on, filter the modules, um, and then fill out a commandlet if I'm doing a working session with someone who doesn't know PowerShell as well. But for in PowerShell 7, while doing VSC uh, on VSC, um, the show command um, the sh command explorer is not capable of filtering by modules or inserting a command. Um, is there a is there a, uh, is it in the roadmap to accomplish like feature parity between the command explorer in VSC and the show command add-on in ISC? So all I can really say is I know that there is the PowerShell command explorer like built into the VS Code extension right now. It was one of the last things implemented by the previous maintainer. It's actually still labeled preview, unfortunately. Um, I say that there's a good chance we could get it to parity, although I don't think it's higher on our list right now as we've been focusing on stability, especially of existing features. Uh, but the, honestly, that sounds like a great idea. If you could like describe what feature that was that you want and um, follow our issue creation template on the GitHub, it um, also asked for like a screenshot. If you could like show me what you're looking at in the ISC, that'd be great. We can get it filed and hopefully get working on it. Okay. Rob, do you Perfect. have anything to add for that? No, no, just that, yeah, the the um, command explorer uh, concept was a, a community edition um, that we kind of, um, uh, you know, wheeled out as a proof of concept, but it didn't really take off at the time. Um, at the time, VS Code didn't have quite all the functionality we needed, and I don't know where that situation lies now. Um, but as Andy says, all of our um, work is tracked in the repo, so um, if you don't see an issue for it, it means that we're not planning to do it. So um, please open an issue to request that feature. Um, and um, you know we are working on on other things right now, especially stability and performance. Um, but uh, it's you know we we always have our ears open to um, you know what what people are looking for in uh, in the extension. Okay. And I certainly don't like leaving things unfinished, especially in the extension. So it's bothered me that this thing calls itself preview and it's in the extension too. So yeah, please do just open that up. I posted the link right there. Um, I think it's a good idea. Thanks for the great question, Ian. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to close this particular community call. Remember, November is the month of birthday for PowerShell, 15 years. And also, I'd like to give one shout out. We will also be at the Automation and DevOps Summit Conference that is, what, it's November 15th, 16th, and 17th, I think, which I don't know. Sounds like a great time to celebrate and talk about PowerShell its birthday and the innovations both in the past and going forward. So just to throw that out to you, thank you everyone for attending this community call. Look forward to the recording up on our YouTube in about a week, along with the notes. Thank you, Sydney, very much for taking those notes. Thanks to the team members for being here and thanks to all of you. Again, we really appreciate your time, your effort and your contributions to our favorite product. So thank you very much. Have a great month.